Are you tired of endlessly searching for coding answers in your internet browser? If you're like me, you probably have like 100 plus tabs open with various Stack Overflow and tutorial pages. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Code GPT plugin for Visual Studio Code, which allows you to access the power of ChatGPT directly in VS Code Editor. It means that we can ask ChatGPT to generate code, explain code, debug code, and write documentations, and everything will be done within VS Code. No more going back and forth between windows. So without further ado, let's get started. In the VS Code, click on the extension button to go to the extension marketplace, and then search for Code GPT. You see a bunch of plugins, and this is the one I'm going to show you. It's called Code GPT, and the publisher name is CodeGPT.co. So just install that. I've already have it installed. This plugin is free to use and it connects to ChatGPT's via API directly. So we'll need an API key from OpenAI. Let's go to OpenAI website and you can register a free account here. After you have your free account, you have a $5 for a free trial. Although the $5 doesn't sound a lot, it will actually last you a very long time. Once we're in the OpenAI account, Click on the profile and view API keys. You can click on this button to create a new secret key and just make sure that you copy the key before clicking away. By using this button, it will copy the key because once you click away, you won't be able to see the key again. If you lost your secret key, then you can just come over to this page and just create a new key. Then we're going to go back to VS Code and we'll use the shortcut key by pressing Control Shift and P to bring up the command palette and then just type set API key and you should see this code GPT set API key, press enter and then just paste the API key that we just copied from OpenAI, enter to confirm. So now we're done the installation and usually I like to reload VS Code after installing a plugin. So let's do that, so Shift and P and just type reload. So we can change the settings by click on this wheel icon and go to extension settings. The default we're using OpenAI as the provider. And these are the language models that we can choose from. By default, this is the GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is similar to the chat GPT that the public has access to. Currently, we can also choose GPT 4 from the list, but you need to request access from OpenAI first. I don't have access to the GPT 4 API yet, so the rest of this demo will be using the GPT 3.5 Turbo version instead. There are a couple of ways to access Code GPT or Chat GPT in VS Code, and I'll show you guys all the ways that I know of. So the first way is by using the Code GPT plugin window, which we should see an icon on the left-hand side panel after installing the plugin. So click on this and this will bring up the plugin chat window. So now we can communicate with chat GPT. The first example I'm gonna show is to ask the AI to explain a code. So this is a stable diffusion Discord bot that I made previously. And I'm going to copy this code and ask chat GPT to explain what the code does. Feel free to pause the video and take a look at the explanation. It's actually pretty accurate. The second way to interact with ChatGPT is by selecting the code and then right click to bring up the menu. You see a bunch of options here and these are pretty self-explanatory. So I'm not going to show all the features listed here. Uh, for this example, we're going to use the AI to explain what the code does. So we're going to pick this explain code GPT. So that's done and we see a new window pop up and this is the explanation of the code right here. Let me show you another way to interact with chat GPT, which is by using comments. So here I've typed a comment saying generate Python code to combine Excel. And after typing the prompt, we can press control shift and I, and this will actually feed this prompt to chat GPT. And we should see another window pop up briefly. So here, this is our code to combine multiple Excel files. If you pause the video here and take a look at the code, it's actually pretty accurate, except that it's still using the append function, which is actually getting deprecated very soon. So if you need to combine Excel files, don't use append, use concat. Another way to use the plugin is by selecting the code inside the script. While this is selected, we can come over here to the chat window and then we can type a prompt. And the plugin is smart enough to know that the selected code is referring to this over here. So here we have it, uh, but it's kind of looking weird. Okay, so after some tweaking, I finally got the code format to be correct. 
Previously, I was using the markdown file format, and now it's actually putting the code into a code block, and it's now much easier to read. So as you can see, this is actually the right R code. It's very accurate. Before I end the video, I just want to show you how much it costs to run these models using the API. I did some experimentation on March 19th, and as you can see, I made 32 requests to the API. Today, on the March 21st, I made another 8 requests. In total, there were about 40 requests that I made using the API, and that only cost me like 4 cents. So that's what I meant by the $5 will actually last you a long time. Alright, that's everything I want to show you guys today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.